Wouldn't it be nice if we could win a game when we had to? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sucker and blue. I don't want to hold you. What was that? This is going to be a good year. Uh, not this game. It's the best game ever. Hello and welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 73 has concluded for the Hawks as they lose at home to the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of 3-1, to 2-1, to one, and then an empty netter. Close game throughout, but the big story is the Hawks failing to take advantage of the Arizona Coyotes losing tonight. So good news is the Hawks don't actually you know, lose any ground in the wildcard race, but they've really squandered a chance to gain ground and get closer to that playoff spot. This is the type of game that we're going to look back on at the end of the season when the Hawks miss the playoffs and look, you know what? We missed by one point and this was a game where we should have gotten a point in. Out shoot your opponent 41-28. Had some really good chances. Was in the game the entire time. And you just don't get a point. These are the ones you kick yourself over. The Hawks controlled play for a good portion of this game. They had their chances. I mean, they had 41 shots. They outshot the Flyers. They had their chances, but they only could muster a single goal. Carter Hart played outstanding. He made some incredible saves at times. But the Hawks, like this is the first time we've scored less than two goals since November 16th. Our offense, our power play, which had two chances in this game, has gone ice cold. We have fallen, and we can't get back up. We need life alert. We are on life alert right now with where our position is in the standings. And not only that, but the one goal we did get in this game didn't even come from one of our forwards. It came from our defenseman, Eric Gustafson. He scored the first goal in this game about 10 minutes into the first period. Puts the Hawks up 1-0. Gustafson, 15 goals this season. Not bad at all for a defenseman, but we can't be relying on him getting goals and winning games. That's just a bad strategy. The Blackhawks lead wouldn't last too long, though. Five minutes later, Corbin Knight would get his first goal of the season to tie this one up at one apiece, and that's the score that would last through the second period and into the third. The Flyers would take the lead about halfway through the third period when James Van Riemsdyk, older brother of Blackhawks legend Trevor Van Riemsdyk, throws a backhand shot from, I don't know, let's say Lake County on net and with traffic in front, it gets by Crawford. Not a goal that you want Crawford to give up in that situation. That's a tough goal to give up uh, to have the Flyers take the lead on. The Hawks would fail to get the equalizing goal with the rest of the time remaining in the third period. Couturier would get a empty netter for the Flyers, and the Hawks lose this one 3-1. So as mentioned, Blackhawks squander an opportunity in this one to gain ground in the playoff race, but good news is that it's not as bad as it could have been because the Arizona Coyotes ended up losing their game, didn't even get a point in their game. But that said, it basically means that the next three games, the back-to-back with the Colorado Avalanche and then the game after that against the Arizona Coyotes, those three games are must-win games. And quite honestly, those are like win in regulation, all three wins. One thing that could help the Blackhawks in this final stretch of games here would be to get Drake Kajula back in the lineup. He's been missing for a while because of a concussion. It looks like he's getting close. He skated the other day. He practiced uh, earlier this morning. It looks like he might be able to go for this weekend of games, but no word yet. And, of course, uh, concussions are, are, are tricky beasts. So who knows? But if he gets back on the lineup, uh, that would definitely help the Hawks uh, immensely. Now, if you want to take your mind off the negative results of the Blackhawks as of late, you can look at some newsworthy items that have come out pertaining to the Hawks. Number one, the United Center is going to get a brand new shiny scoreboard for next year. Uh, Kind of sad. Kind of sad news, uh, at least to me. Like The original scoreboard for the United Center... 
for as long as it's been in the United Center, like it's kind of just been a part of that arena. It makes up the uh, just the feel of the inside of the arena, and I liked it. It was a nice shape. It, it, it looked nice, but yeah, of course, modern day standards, it's it's you know kind of small. And and this brand new scoreboard, you look at the images. Oh my God, it's gonna be huge. Believe me, the best scoreboard around. Believe me, huge. Uh, number two, the Blackhawks are going to be starting their season over in Europe next year. They're going to be finishing off their training camp in Germany, and then they're going to be playing the Philadelphia Flyers in their opening game in Prague, Czech Republic. A kind of need for Dominic Cahoon, uh, assuming that he's still in the club next year. Uh, Germany and Czech Republic, two countries that he has ties with, born in the Czech Republic, plays for Germany internationally, uh, kind of neat. And third and finally uh, of the good news things, um, we hit 400 subscribers, so I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. I have finally decided what that giveaway is going to be, so I'm going to be posting a video announcing the giveaway uh, sometime this weekend, so stay tuned for that. If you notice, didn't really talk about this game a whole lot in this video. It's kind of sad. So think about the happy things. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.